Hi, I'm Fred Reed from CNY Live. Uh, I've got a great deal for you today to sit down and listen to. Um, I'm talking with Kevin Dean, uh, local well-known musician, long-term musician, doesn't mean he's old, uh, and uh, well-known drum teacher. Um, what else? What else do you do? I mean, got teaching and music. That's that's a lot already, Kevin. Yeah, I'm first a music fan, so the best reward for me is when my kids or adults get out there playing in bands. You know, love it. Or they start teaching, or they go to school for music, or they start their own little endeavor, you know. So you kind of like extend what you, you know, you, you just kind of like extend into the future there. So yeah, I mean, of course, it's my living, so I want clients, but there's no better reward than when they reach a level they can teach themselves. Sure. You know? I, I, I mean, I personally think anybody that's willing to teach people good stuff, especially music. I think music has a, a far-reaching thing other than just entertainment in a person, okay. especially in a young person's upbringing. Um, it, it was part of my upbringing too, not being taught, but watching my brothers play and stuff. It made a difference. So oh, yeah. it makes a difference when you do teach, but let's let's go back a, a couple of years to, to you know, what got you <laughs> what got you started with music in general. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a long answer. I'll try to condense it. Uh, basically, watching my friend Jeff Tortora, who I didn't know yet, uh, kill the drum set at a, at a school concert. Uh, I went to St. Daniel's in Lincourt, and we would walk across the street down the road to Lincourt School and watch their concert. And here's this seven-year-old, destructive. The Buddy Rich meets Neil Peart, you know, seven, eight years old. And Wow, I didn't want to be a superstar or anything like that. I mean, I don't think I got into drumming to be in this interview and famous. <laughs> I want to hide from the camera. I hate that camera. But as we get going, I'll get more comfortable. It's not there. <laughs> no, we'll keep going. No edits. This is real, you know. Um, but yeah, Jeffrey, oh, we became great friends. Uh, I made it to concert band, but I was like five years behind him and a lot of the people. Lincourt is a hotbed for talent. Okay. Um, we'll talk about a little bit of that later because uh, it keeps coming back to me. Friends in that network hooked me up and vice versa. <laughs> uh, Jeff is out in uh, Vegas now. He's been in the Blue Man Group for, geez, 20 years. No kidding. Yeah, he's not kidding. Wow. Plus he has side projects and tours. Um, so he's still an inspiration. I still look up to him. You know? <laughs> it's amazing what little wonders came out of these areas but then oh, go, yeah. you know, that you don't hear about until talking to somebody. Yeah, like I hope he's watching something. this. Congratulations on all your endeavors. Sir. He's always got a new picture of some star he met. You know? <laughs> well, you can share this with him saying you met me. Oh, okay. no way. <laughs> but back then in concert band, um, you know, I was squirrely. I was still fidgety, you know, but you know, I couldn't sit still and I was talking and I'd get in trouble a lot. Stop talking, Mr. D, all that stuff. And I didn't practice like I should have. And my drumsticks would stay on the music stand at school. I didn't even own drums for a few years. Finally got a drum set at 16 and boy, did my life change. Luckily, I found uh, my greatest musical partner, Steve Evans. Hope you're watching, too. Play your guitar. Come over here and write with me again. Steve Evans and I started our first band, and uh, we just kept pushing each other. What was the name of it? If you don't the Third Party. Third Party. Pre-internet, so you're not going to find anything. <laughs> <laughs> no MySpace. You know what, though? You know what, though? Um, congratulations, Kevin and Steve and Matt Cooper. Matt Cooper, you're watching, too. Uh, we were nominated for the first Sammy Awards. No, nope. we didn't win, but that's huge, man. Yeah, yeah. same year, uh, you know, Dracula Jones uh, was up there, and uh, Bone China took the category. I don't know if anybody is as old as us and remembers these bands, but that was a uh, you know little little nudge, like okay, you're on the right track, you're doing something. Yeah. And at that point, um, I was in college at OCC. Went to a concert band, did a little bit of jazz band, not really a jazz drummer, but. I, I put the hours in. <laughs> Still working on that. Um, that was pretty intense. Um, people, you know, they talk trash about community college, but um, it's no joke. It was just a struggle. You know, I almost dropped out. It's really hard for me. I um, I had no melodic training at all, so I was a dumb drummer, and uh, I had to start with you know Mary had a little lamb on hand. That was my minor. He had a minor in piano. Really. I hope I'm speaking loud enough. Isn't that a trip? It, that is, it is. Now, for most musicians, uh, you know, they're a little confused. You know, why are you in music school? You don't know a major scale. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know a major scale, snare drum. So I, <laughs> I felt lucky to be there, you know, but that was a whirlwind of just cramming all this new information in my brain, not only playing piano, 
but translating that to xylophone, chimes, marimba vibes, and then I joined drum corps. It, you know, same era. Sure. So I got my band, working a job, trying to stay in college. Now I'm in drum corps. What an idiot. <laughs> no, my advice to any of you watching is do that. You know, don't go crazy, but fill your calendar. Get gates, get something booked. You know, I believe um, Stacy Waterman uh, said a quote, I can only paraphrase. She, she, you know, no matter how good you are, you know, I think she said, um, you're as good as your calendar. I mean, you're viable as the dates you have booked, sure. basically. I, sorry, Stacy, I'm paraphrasing. But that stuck with me, you know, and I always have a full calendar. Doesn't mean I'm the greatest drummer. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a busy one. Yeah, well, trying to. Sometimes it's overwhelming. And that's the danger of freelancing. Yeah. You know, um, can I really commit to this? I don't like the partial commitment. You know? Right. So, um, sorry, we, you opened a can of worms. No, no but I want to keep it going, though, because I, I, I really want to ask you a question. So when yeah. you were 16 and got that first drum set, you thought of something. But when you got into the other <coughs> learning, the, I mean, you're... Exponentially, your outlook must have changed. Oh, completely. Just, you know. Yeah. Um, on one hand, I felt the prestige. I'm in music school. I'm in, I'm in the upper echelon. I also got the fear of reality. Like, I don't know shit about music. <laughs> you know what I mean? I still get that sometimes in this room, you know. Well, this isn't even the cool room. We should take the camera and show them the drum room. We'll, we'll walk around. Uh, rhythms and melodies, by the way, at East Syracuse. Just so you know. <laughs> yes, and we're going to be talking about yeah, that. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, yeah, but back to your, your comment there. Uh, yeah, it was, um, you know, rock and roll out the window. Heavy metal, and we were extreme, like, fresh, math, progressive band, you know, with very little melody. It was just constant rhythm, bombast, confusion. You couldn't really groove for too long without going into some wacky 11 or 17. What? Right. That, that was where we were. We just constantly... Challenging ourselves. We yeah. were sick of radio, sick of predictable stuff, even though we love Beatles and Floyd and Zeppelin. Well, sure. We still love sure. all that. Hendrix, you know. So, college, um, I don't want to trash talk, but a, a careful way to say this is um, they're fucking music snobs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it was, it was damaging to it some people. Be, yeah. It was very sure. damaging on some, some level. Um, and I had a couple mean instructors, not at college, uh, one at college, I won't speak his name, but I will never recommend him for lessons. And I think that one person is, is the, re the biggest reason I teach. <clears throat> so I would never, ever do that to someone. Uh, he believed in negative reinforcement. I don't, I don't work that way. I don't um, believe you should. You know. No way. I got the guilt trip. Uh, my technique was wrong. Rock and roll is going to ruin my drumming. Heavy metal is just a waste of my time. I need to practice more, which was true. Yeah, and I, true I love the guy. Yeah. I do. Now I, I still have much respect for him. I love his playing, and he's right. A lot of what he said was right. But that approach uh, doesn't get good results. It doesn't, but in this, in this case it did because it created you now. In All an right. obscure way. All right. I do get it because... And I don't mean to put that out there, but it's like... I get it. Um, I think his philosophy was he wanted me to have the attitude, well, I'll show you. Yeah. I did. But that's not why. He wasn't why I showed him. Right. I right. wanted to learn. Yeah. I didn't go to college for, you know, the highest paying career. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about money. We're doing... All right. Yeah. yeah. Um... So that's, I mean, that's great. So uh, bring us forward to, you know, what are some of your, like, nowadays music projects that you're doing? Oh, like wonderful, bands are in and wonderful stuff. question. Um, dangerous type. Um, we just had our five-year anniversary, and we're having a five-year anniversary show Friday at Wildcat. Or not Wildcat, Average Joe's. I gotta look at my list. <laughs> Better look that up. Uh, Wildcat's fresh on my brain. Because... We'll fact check that for you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Do I got it right? Yes, I do. This Friday at Average Joe's. Um, when you get this busy of a calendar, like you're probably sure you do, you have, um, you just forget. So, right. I totally on a date can write it down. If Google ever shuts down, I'm out of work. <laughs> hey, my whole world shut down oh, yesterday and my phone died. Do you have a black book still? No, I didn't have anything. Do you know your mother's phone number? I do. You better. I know that. 
Uh, dangerous type. Um, yeah. Great bunch of guys, and you know that other famous quote, you know, play music with people with more experience than you. Well, I'm in it. I'm a young guy, and it's Steve Shad, Jerry Tiroli, uh, Tim Robinson, and Andy Comstock. Mm -hmm. And Andy's also in the Burn Dogs. Jerry was in Under the Gun for a million years. And Steve Shad was in United Booty Foundation, Dr. Fever, legend. <laughs> So we started as a Cars tribute band, and that's pretty rare, you know, I love the Cars. Sure. We did uh, like a 45 minute set opening up for another band, and then it just evolved into that first decade of MTV, you know, aside from the hair metal. You know, I think the closest we get to that is maybe uh, Bon Jovi. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know, we know the gamut. It's Foreigner to Styx, and, you know, we do some earlier stuff too. We throw in a couple of Zeppelin and Floyd just because we love that stuff. Yeah. We, we make it work, you know. And I would say that is a band to uh, catch out live. Uh, all, Thank like you. you said, all great musicians, and, and, and then they have a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I found college. Yeah, there comes the drummer. Yeah, very, very proud of what we've done. You know, um, the 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 bands I usually get work from, unfortunately, you know, we gotta go back in time and play Billboard, you know, top tens. That's sure. how it goes. That's the name of the game. Um, and the jazz musicians around town, you know how hard it is to make a living. Yeah. Yeah. It's even hard for us playing popular rock and roll. Still, you know, we got to struggle. We got to get out there. It's, it's a hustle. Uh, the other project is uh, Seattle Suns. And I think by the name, we can figure out what that's all about. But just the other day, um, I met a woman who had no idea what grunge was. Oh. Was she 15 or something? Or? <laughs> no, I know she's a little older than me, not too much older than me. Oh yeah, what, what kind of bands? I don't know grunge. I said, Pearl Jam, I figured that's the one. So right? No idea. Nirvana. She didn't even have a reaction somewhere in Smash Your Pumpkins. I was, my, I'm getting louder telling it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? In the library, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so I, you know, I guess it's not as popular as I thought. You know. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of fun, and uh, it definitely hits a nerve because uh, I was in college, in drum corps, in my band during that era. You know, yeah, my formative drumming years. You know, right. so it's super close to the heart, and you can tell when we play. And that's uh, Shane Stillman, Jake Bummer, and Scott Henderson's are the bass player. Kick it ass. When is uh, uh, is there a current? Let me get my list. Let me get my list. Yeah, we have a lot. You got to plug it, man. You got to plug it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we are next Friday at Docks in Ithaca, and we would love you to make a road trip. If anyone in the outer regions down south, southern tier, stop by. Uh, we have a pre-Halloween show at Awful Al's. Oh, all right. It's not called Awful Al's anymore. No, it's Al's Whiskey, whiskey Bar, and bar yeah. and Whiskey and Wine Lounge. Somebody can email us correction if yes. you want, or comment. <laughs> That's on the Thursday before. Okay. And then we have Halloween, uh, Latterman's. Latterman MC Auburn's Halloween party. I believe I have that right. Uh, hit us up for details. Um, but the big one, Flannel Fest. Got a crap for Shane. Shane's coming. So what he did is, uh, we're the hosts, but we're not the headliners. We grabbed um, <coughs> them bones, Alice and Shane's tribute. And uh, there'll possibly be another tribute. We're, we're poking around. And I'm going to try my best to remember this other band's name. Um, Infrared Radiation Light Orchestra. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah. I think. They need an anachronism. And uh, I don't know if I'm <laughs> supposed to say this yet, but we're trying to get Joe Driscoll in between sets and Ben Blue just his band. Oh, yeah. Ben. Love Ben. Not fully confirmed yet, but now it's out there. So yeah, that's nudge those guys. Right. Is that it for now? Yeah, that's the big one. Flannel Fest. And that, when is that again? That's... Um, Oh, I didn't say the date. November 13th at the Westcott. And that's thanks to Shane Stillman and Dan Mastronari. I haven't seen you in a while, Dan. What's up? <laughs> I'm talking like we're live. <laughs> well, we will be when somebody watches it. So, um, so I'll, I, 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 off the wall kind of a question here yeah. uh, for transition. And it's going to kind of transition to where I want to go with you next. Is that, um, you know, I, I, you mentioned a lot of tribute bands, and nothing wrong with it, okay? Because people, we miss old music. We miss music that we don't even hear on the radio that much anymore. Um, but do you feel that um, that you know? How, I mean, how do you feel about that in general? For the record, um, first and foremost, I prefer original music. I want to write. I want to see new music. I want to see original music. I love it. 
It's my favorite thing. Not just for my own pride, but I'm proud of other people. Like, you did that? That's yours? Awesome. Yeah. You know, it could be mediocre. They, they might screw it up. I'm just proud they tried. They put it out there. You know, they got naked, and here I am in my underwear. You know? yeah. This is me. You know? and, that, and that's what it is when you write a song, though. When you put together yeah, music, is. Is you're really yeah. putting your heart and soul on the outside of your skin. Absolutely. And, you know, and, you know thank you for your nice, kind introduction. And unfortunately, I'm well known. I don't want to be, I want to hide. That's why I'm in the back of the stage. <laughs> and I was telling him earlier, I hate being on camera, and the irony is I, I won public speaking awards. I, I was the president of Junior Achievement. Um, it's amazing that I've done these things, toured America, toured in original bands, original bands. And I, I hate it, you know, part of me hates it because I, I have social anxiety to imagine that. As talkative as I am, and as friendly as I am, a lot of times I just want to be alone. You know, right here. Me and a pal. Or me and a bongo. Or pick another guitar or something. I'm terrible at it. So how do I feel about cover bands? Well, I, not so much that, but how... Being in a cover band? Well, with the way you rather, I'd rather not. There, I said it. But... I wouldn't be able to afford to do what I do if I didn't play covers, and that's, that's an unfortunate reality. You know? Right. Now, I'm only going to guess this, but at least years ago, Ithaca was the kind of place that thrives on everything, um, you know, self-made, man, handmade, homemade, you know, original music, you know, really kind of stifling the, the tribute bands or the cover bands. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're still like that, okay. but we all know about Ithaca, you know. You're not allowed to drive a tractor trailer through the main town there. It just there's not a highway that goes through there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a little tucked away, you know, artsy fartsy hippie place environment, yeah. and I love it. And it spawns amazing creativity. You know, it really does. Syracuse, we have those pockets. They're here. Yes, they are. And there sure is a giant movement of creative people, and they're out there. You know, I hear people say, oh, they don't write tunes like they used to. Yes, they do. You're just not looking. Yeah, you're not looking. You're on the radio or satellite. And yes. you're stuck with a program director yeah. and their idea. Don't get me started on that. Well, well I, I mean, know who you are, program directors. I love you. you, know you mean. But your hands are tied, and I'm, I feel bad for you. Yeah, Someone, because someone's got to break the barrier on that again. I mean, if you think of 60s and 70s, bands were made famous by the DJs. You know, they are playing their music absolutely. and they would send their music into a DJ and play it. But absolutely, I, I mean, we all know Dave Prasine has done what he can, and you he know, still does. He's, he's, he's tried, to, yeah, oh, yeah, he's tried to break the barriers, he's done his best. Oh, what yeah. he's doing now is fantastic. Once an hour, you yep. get somebody from the 315, and yep. you know, if we could only get more of that, I do know that Dixon, I think you just said that, absolutely, you know, is, is and he's probably going to take his place if Dave ever Those retires. Those two are you know, at the forefront, right? Central New York. Yeah. So the reason I kind of went into that though is when, so as a teacher of drums or whatever you want to teach. Um, you just sparked another conversation here, buddy. Okay. You didn't even finish your statement. <laughs> well, I mean, I I'm mean, do you track what I said in a second? Okay. Do you apply? I mean, like when you teach them, do you teach them to try to think of original things or you know learn the basics and then what are you going to do with it or absolutely? What's your goal there? Absolutely. First goal is. Um, you gotta learn from the masters. You don't have to. You can free form and just experiment. That's the long road for some people. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have that natural creativity. Um, I want them to know the written language. I know, I know, half of you are out there. You don't need to read music. Agree, you don't, you don't. But I'm here calling myself a teacher, so half of our curriculum, you're gonna see notes on the page. Hey. If you're scared and I realize I'm, I'm losing you, I get the yawns, oh, you know. Like I did in class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's payback. I, I get it. I'll, I'll change topics. You know, I'm a little scattered myself. ADHD, undiagnosed. We didn't. It didn't exist when we were kids. But my solution to ADHD or anything related is, you know, with the kids and adults. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna retract what I said partially about, you know, the, the cover band situation. I prefer not to. I need to, and I do enjoy it. I would enjoy original music more. But yeah, I'm, I'm gearing each one of my students to make a living, to get right out there, do at least play covers. Get your foot in the door with covers. I mean, that's, I mean, that's common sense. The Stones' first album, Dive Her Down, Van Halen. It's cover songs, by the way. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, I'll give you a quote 
that Beatles were a cover band for six days a week. Yeah. What, five shows a night? Journey. Yeah. Yep. For months and, months and months and months and months. Covers, covers, covers. Before they did it. The story I heard Michelangelo say was, we always copy what was done before and then try to make it our own. Absolutely. So it's not a bad thing to learn. Yep from the originals, you know? Yeah, this could spawn a conversation for hours, you know, the old saying Correct. that it's all been done before, you know, yeah. and you go back to those early masters, Bach, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky. Our theory is based on Bach. <laughs> hey, there's still people like copying Chuck Berry's licks. What about Paganini's one string solos? Yeah. There you go. This is all my brothers. Yep. It is. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> but then they take it and do it their own way. That's why I kind of ask. Right. It's like what some of you, so you kind of answer your goals are is, you know, you got to teach them the basics to get someplace, and you teach what was done with the basics to make it better, and then you kind of get them yeah. into their own. Yeah. But you're also trying to teach them is if they want to be a drummer, they got to make a living. Well, it's it's a thick bunch of layers, actually. Sure. The goal, um, the goals. Um, we're digging into some real brain power here. You know, I'm doing some Latin stuff with the right foot, some Spanish rhythm with the left foot. The hands are doing something different. This is real cerebral. You've got to get into some meditative state to pull this off. Sure. You know what I mean? Some people don't. They just happen to play it well. So that, that's going to transfer into every aspect of life. You know, uh, How to retain information, how to memorize it. Again, why not learn to read? It's going to be easier to memorize. Because you don't have to memorize it. You just read it. Hey, guys, I'm ready. You've never heard the song. Well, I have the sheet music. I mean, right. Come on. Yeah. It's you don't true. have to press rewind and rewind and rewind and then wake up with the headphones hoping you memorized it. I don't have to. I got the sheet. You know. I wish I had learned sheet. Just music. my opinion. So. <laughs> it's it's true though. It's true though. Yeah, but with the, the drumming goals, you know, when they leave this room, I want them inspired enough and have the confidence to get on stage. Like next week. Let's go. Put it in motion. So uh, again. The name of the studio is? Rhythms and Melodies. How, if they want to get a hold of you, whether website, MySpace, Facebook, telephone number? Telephone number, <laughs> wow, wow, and it's a good one. I should give you my little commercial. 999 Drum. There you go. Okay. There you go. Uh, I won't give you my personal number on this interview, but it's right on my Facebook page. There. There you go. There you go. So that's the best way if a student wants to come down to Rhythms and Melodies dot com. It's not even a finished website, but we know the deal. Facebook's probably the quickest. If you have my actual phone number, text by far is the fastest way to reach me. What's, um, if there is, what's next for you beyond what you're doing right now? Anything, I mean, besides, besides the shows and stuff, you know, where do you, Good question. what kind of goal do you set up? Uh, well, recently, this week, eBay World, uh, I used to do it with my band, but um, that was like, nine years ago I stopped doing that so I'm a newbie again and I have tons of equipment here and people keep giving me stuff anything I can't give to somebody or nobody seems to want I'm just throwing it in I have all these music books over here guitar and piano we sell books <laughs> I got guitar straps and all that stuff so I guess retail okay. strangely enough so um, maybe a garage sale one day out front. I'm dying to write a song again, so that is most definitely on the horizon. No kidding. Strangely, I find myself um, writing on piano and guitar more so than drums. And I you're doing drums. you're doing lyrics and everything, right? You're not just uh, putting yeah, that but that track. Shh, shh. Okay. You're not gonna hear this for a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's no rush on something you enjoy, you know. No, I really am dying to uh, to get out there on tour and with an original band. You know, no kidding. In those years, you know, we lived off our ten dollar per diem. We came home with the same bills, so yeah, yeah. Not, I'm not jaded at all. The most amazing experience in my life, but it was tough, real tough. Sure. You know, if you don't do it, you'll never know. Yeah. If you don't try it. Yeah, but I got the energy. I mean, I'm 50 now. My back's 90. <laughs> That's from. But I, feel, I still feel like I'm 19. Though. You know, I still have that, you know, positive attitude. You know. I haven't been kicked in the throat too much yet. I have, though. <laughs> you just got to move on from it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like you said, you know, somebody can beat you down, but they're not going to hold you down. You're yeah. going to come up stronger. Keep yeah. fighting. Well, another endeavor, um, there's more to Rhythms and Melodies. Um, right next door is my girlfriend's studio, our movie studio, and she's having an art show on uh, November 5th. I get that right. I got that wrong. 
Yeah, yeah. November 5th. Yeah, okay. That's 6 to 10 p.m., free show. And yeah. she's right here at Rhythms oh, and Melodies in East Syracuse. And yeah, as you come in the door, actually, there's some great pieces right down there in your in the, the downstairs front door. There. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And her name is Teresa Pusha. This is her debut art show. And I think she's a little nervous, but she's going to be fine because her, her work's beautiful. So please give some support. You guys are welcome. Tour the studio, hang out, have music, food, and beverages. And um, yeah, it's Teresa Pusha, and she's also featuring her friend Adrian Valenti. Sorry, I almost forgot to say that. That's okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Uh, I really appreciate the time. I've learned a lot. I love coming into these interviews Thank not you. knowing anything. That way I can just ask the stupidest question and get the best <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah, I hope I didn't go too far off the rails there. No, I mean, this is to you know, talk to the public, tell them what you're doing. So I think this was great. I really appreciate it. I don't do that enough. Yeah, and I, I need to really um, post on my page more, the, the Rhythms and Melodies page. Here. <laughs> and um, so I have people who come to the end of this to know that, you know, if you're a musician or a performer or an artist or know of somebody that wants to be talked to the public or tell people what they do, you should contact CNY Live because if there's one thing I love doing is I love doing these interviews. I love meeting people such as yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you Thank very you. much, Kevin. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care, everybody.